You're listening to the Mutual Audio Network. Have a good day. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Audio drama in the age of Arthur. The Table Round. Invisible as dark of night, that heaven and earth in depth and height may see not by mild moon's light, nor even stars would grant them sight. The Immortal Legends of the Table Round Chapter 14 how Sir Balin came to Camelot and the bridge of the ill custom. The Lady of the Lake is dead, beheaded while in King Arthur's hall by the savage knight Sir Balin. Exiled from Camelot, Balin flees through the realm with abandon, while the court wizard Merlin departs with his companion Vivian to the mystic Isle of Avalon. There you go. Nice horse. I like horses, Bedivere. They make sense. They're good, honest creatures. They might kick you, or throw you, or bite you, but a horse will never lie to you. You sound as if you find horses more noble than men. Horses can only be what they are. Good, strong beasts. Men have to try to be more than beasts. It's the root of all our suffering. If you say so. I just keep seeing the Lady of the Lake's head. The way it rolled. I've seen heads roll before. I've even done the chopping. But hers was so small. Her neck was so graceful. She didn't even scream. You couldn't have stopped Balin. He was too fast. No one saw it coming. But I should have. I knew what kind of a man he was. I'd seen him rage, become more animal than man, and I still let him back into my court. I let him sit at my table. This is my fault. Guinevere is taking this worse than I am. She's been sitting in her solar, brooding. She hasn't eaten. Women are strange creatures. Their joys and their pains work differently. Mayhap she needs to embroider something. Balin asked the queen to wear her emblem. He painted Argent with a gold crown on the inside of his shield, telling her that her example, her virtue, inspired him to be a better knight. Isn't that the duty of a queen? And to have sons. Bedivere, now is not the time. Hark! My gracious noble king, are you still mucking the stable? Yes, what is it, Maldweet? I I don't want to interrupt the mucking. What is it? There is a knight who showed himself just this morning. He wishes to pledge to you his service. Can't it wait until I hold court? Well, his arrival features a problem. I mean, you might have a problem with his features. Are you being droll? Never, my lord. I only mean he wore the look of a man who should like to see, or not to see at all. Who, this knight? The same, quite the same. I mean the knight is quite the same. What are you going on about? I mean the... Knight is the same in appearance, and by that I mean he should make an appearance. Very well. Send him in. I shall bring him in to face you, my lord. Face to face, as it may be. Something about that new fool strikes me as a little off. I don't know. Perhaps he just arrived at too dour a time. Well, he's quite a juggler. My lord, King Arthur. Balin. I warned you, man, it would be your death to show your face here again. How dare you? Wait. (gasps) You're not him. 
You look just like him. It's uncanny. But you're not the savage. Your eyes are not as flinty, and you're a tad larger. And Your the hair is cleaner. I am Balan of Northumbria. Balin was my brother. Was he now? Yes. Twins, my lord. And what do you want? I was told uh, of my brother's crimes against you. You were told he was a murderer? Brutally killing an unarmed woman? My honored guest? A holy woman in Camelot's great hall? Yes, sire. It was a dreadful deed. Yes, it was. Unforgivable. I pray you are not here to beg for pardon for your brother. Never. My love for my brother is undiminished, but the king's will is law. Balin was slave to his rages since childhood. The monk who raised us often warned him that his frenzies would be his undoing. So, what do you wish of me? To serve you, my king, both for the glory of your just and righteous kingdom, and uphold the dignity of my family, of which me and my brother are all that remains. I'm not certain I wish to subject my queen to the sight of you. It would trouble her, your resemblance to your brother. I understand, my king. I, I will leave Camelot and never return, if that is your will. No. Stop. I will not condemn a man for his face. But time must pass. Your brother's ignominy is too fresh a wound. Hmm. Better here. Is there something for Balon? Some task we could send him on? Some good work far from here? Well, sire, there was the matter of the forest by Mount Salvat. Oh, yes, the matter with the demon. Demon? Travelers are telling of some kind of demon, or dread spirit or something, in the woods near Carbonic. Honestly, I think it's an excuse for why the taxes are late, but someone really needs to look into it. You had planned to send Eric or Loncio, but neither of them have turned up in weeks. See, Balon, good fortune. Here is a duty for you, one that you can partake in far from my sight. Perform this deed. Return when it is completed, and then we perhaps can speak of your service. I thank you, gracious king, for this opportunity. You will not regret it. I have heard that before. approaches. Put the dagger down, milady. I mean you no ill. Who are you? Who are you? And why are you so tenderly guarding that dead knight in the middle of the road? Because it was a fine night in life. Because danger still lurks near. Because my paramour who lies here was unjustly slain by the laughing madman, the evil Garlan. Where is this Garlan now? Perhaps he has fled. Perhaps he's still hiding nearby. He possesses the secret art of invisibility. Invisibility? Kuyuk Tavshe! Yes, a power he uses to slay goodly knights. Oh, lady, I am a simple man, with no name or honor. I do not seek glory or praise. All I have of value are these two swords, and if I could somehow put them to good purpose, I will seek to. Will you accept my aid in pursuing justice for this dead knight? I would accept any aid, from knight or knave, devil or angel, if it meant having vengeance on Garland. What is your name, knight? Me? I I'm no one, and of no note. You may call me the knight with two swords. Tis a fitting enough name and well describes my own use. Then I will accept your aid, knight with two swords. Let us make for Castle Corbonic and seek the vile garland where he dwells. 
I am your ladyship's servant. Travelling by wagon is so uncivilized. It has the advantage of being less comfortable than a mare, but makes up for that by being slower and more difficult. I've walked from the lands of the Geats to the lands of the Bengali Moors. I'm certain I could make it to Avalon yet again. It was your king who ordered us to bear these gifts to Avalon for the lady's funeral. As if tapestries and jewels can make any difference after such a horrible crime. But don't forget the golden candlesticks. Oh no, never forget the candlesticks. Those make all the difference. Oh, you're being unkind, Vivian. The king was willing to ride with us to the Holy Isle, surrender Excalibur, and accept any penance laid on him. Was he now? I. You refuse to see it, dear lady. But the lad has a heart both noble and kind. The death of his friend and the breaking of his oath gnaw at his conscience equally. Part of him has the heart of a Celtic warrior and regrets he didn't kill Balin with his bare hands. The other part knows that if a king violates a sacred law of hospitality, killing a man who had just dined with him, that lawlessness echoes down throughout the realm. A king must be the pinnacle of law, but never above it. So. King Arthur says yes and no with the same breath. He is plainly your pupil. Lord Merlin! Lord Merlin! <laughs> is that the king's sister, running barefoot through the field? I fear it is. Whoa, there. Well met, Lord Merlin. Hail and greetings, Lady Morgan. You really ought to wear shoes. But the earth feels so good beneath my feet. Are you on your way to Avalon? Yes. Oh, I do wish I could join you. Mother spoke much about it when I was a girl, and I've always longed to see the Fortunate Isle. Have you? Oh, yes. To walk the unplowed fields ripe with fruit. To kneel before the Tower of the Nine Sisters. I'm afraid the Sacred Isle is only for the initiated. Well, then I'll just keep gathering herbs. There's fennel for you, Lady... And columbines. <sighs> they always remind me of my mother. And rue for you, Merlin. Did you know the nuns called it the herb of grace? Oh, look, and there's a daisy. I would give you some violets. My father always favored violets. But there's none to be found. Thank you for the gift. They are quite lovely. Oh, any friend of Merlin's is a friend of mine. You've never told me about this dear friendship, Merlin? Oh, Merlin and I know each other quite well. You might be my family's oldest friend. In fact, I think my earliest memory is the night you came to steal my little baby brother away. Indeed. But of course you knew my mother long before that. At least nine months before? And as for my father, did you ever get the chance to meet my father before his death? I, he and I, I, I knew of him. I do fancy you would have liked him. He was a good duke. He never suffered fools, but he doted on his daughters and loved my mother madly. He called her the Blossom of Cornwall. No, no yes. Well, we must away. Good day, Lady Morgan. We should speak again on my return. Mm -hmm. Yes, perhaps. I would like that. You must come gathering flowers with me. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Merlin, did I just see the great arch-druid, at whose wand the pale ghost quivers and the grim fiend gasps, intimidated by that tiny wisp of a girl? Do not put such stock in her diminutive stature. The Lady Morgan is... Twenty? Twenty-two? 
She knows much. Her eyes see too much. Even before she could speak. And she has much knowledge of the old crafts. She knows the old ways? How interesting. Oh, you don't want to lie yourself with her. Her sister, the witch queen, Anna Morgaus, is wicked. But I understand wickedness. Morgan vexes me. I'm not certain even Lady Morgan knows what drives Lady Morgan. We can ask her. Here she comes. What? <laughs> Merlin, you practically jumped. Ugh. No, she's still back at the tree. Good. Staring at you. No, stop it. With those eyes. Those eyes that see too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think you're so funny. <laughs> McQueen? What is it, Sir Lancelot? Dinner is being served in the smaller hall. The king thought it best. Uh, Sir Kay prepared Brazed Boar. Uh, I, I mean, he orders the kitchen to prepare Brazed Boar. He knows it is your favorite. I'll not be coming down. You've been here alone all day. Are you well? No. I am not well. I am sick. Sick at the deeds of Sir Balen. <laughs> My example was to guide him to the path of proper, virtuous knighthood. I failed. And the Lady of the Lake is dead because of it. My queen, it is unjust to say- You have my leave to go, Sir Lancelot. If my queen will forgive me a moment, I must say, your example has never failed. Like a guiding star, you remain our queen. <clears throat> Bonne nuit, your highness. How much further, my lady? I do not know. Castle Carbonic is somewhere in these woods, in the shadow of Mount Salvat. But stay wary. Garland himself could be standing anywhere, unseen. And more to the point, who is this knight yonder, standing on that bridge? Good morrow, sir. Is this the path that leads to Corbinic? The castle Corbinic is a day's hence. Thank you, sirrah. Now my companion and I shall be on our way. Stop. You shall not pass this bridge. Bah! By what right of you to stop us? By right of this sword, and by right of my four companions who await on the other side of this bridge. But most important, by the right order of our duchess who even now waits in her keep, suffering a great affliction. <laughs> Only five of you! A great affliction? How do you mean? Leprosy, my lady. And what is that to do with us? A holy woman prophesies to our duchess that the affliction could only be cured with blood. Blood? The blood of a noble maiden. If there's to be blood spilled, it shall not be ours. Stop, sir. You, tell me more. To pass, each maiden must fill this saucer. It is not so much. This is ignoble, sir. Very ignoble. It cannot be allowed. Be silent. I, I should defend you from this harm. But I shall do it of my own will, a small price to pay. Hold out that saucer. Yes, my lady. Ah! 
There. Although you have given me no choice, I do wish this blood will restore your duchess. As do we all. Although after many years, our hope wanes. This is an ill custom, sir. Mayhap, but it is our custom. Hello, this is Diana Mather, and I played the Lady on the Road. The character of Maldwit the Fool is from the 13th century French allegory, The Romance of Silence. The work was lost and completely forgotten until 1911, when a country home in Nottingham, England, was cleaning their attic and found a crate labeled Unimportant Documents. Inside the crate was not only the text to the lost romance, but also a personal letter from King Henry VIII. Written by Morgan Z. Soule. Produced by Lindsay Smith. Special audio by David Kendall. King Arthur was Chandler Walpole. Bedivere was Danny Coles. Maljuit was Kerry Ramsier, Lancelot was Joshua Kivy, and Guinevere was Cathy Vargas. Also featuring the voice talents of Blair Palmer Lee as Merlin, Sunny Asadi as Vivian, Abigail Souter as Morgan Le Fay, Charles Marchione as Barlin, Diana Mather as the Lady, and TJ Lloyd as the Knight. Your narrator was Nicola Branch. In the next chapter of the Immortal Tales of the Table Round, the hunt for the wicked Garland takes Balin to the mysterious castle Corbenic, while Balin's dark destiny and his fiery soul draw to a disastrous conclusion. The remains of the wild boar are going cold on the table, and the clan are resting around the fire. The ale is flowing freely, and then Uncle Ned calls for a tale. But where's the bard? Drunk and unconscious under the table. <laughs> That's when you need the Celtic Myth Pod Show, bringing tales and stories of the ancient Celts to your fireside. A fresh tale from the best loved legends twice a month and available from CelticMythPodShow.com And the bard can hear it later. This is 911. What is the nature of your emergency? I've been robbed! Please list the items in question. My latte is only a single! You're calling from a cell phone, aren't you? Yes. In your car? Yes. And there's definitely not a dollar fifty worth of sprinkles on top! They totally ripped me off! You drive a blue BMW with this year's model, don't you? What? License plate XYZ PDQ? Um, uh, yeah? For frivolous waste of 911 operator time, you are removed from the gene pool. <laughs> Don't let this happen to you. Make sure your emergency is a real emergency. Wishful thinking, eh? But wishful thinking is the root of good fiction. For more good fiction, check out 19 Nocturne Boulevard at www.19nocturneboulevard.com. That's 19 Nocturne Boulevard. For friendly service and fuel that's fine, there's a smile for every mile at the Ocean sign. Good afternoon, Miss. Welcome to your friendly neighborhood Ocean Station. What can I do for you today? Hola, Jess. I need exactly two dollars of Ochaline, por favor. Excuse me, did you say... Si. I said exactly two dollars, please. This is the Ochaline station, Jess. Yes, indeedy. We sell only Ochaline with or without kelpinate and Ochaline sargasso with saladine. But why do you want exactly two dollars worth? Because the man on the radio told me that I would get more miles per dollar when I choose Sochaline with Kelponate. Today, I plan to drive twice as far as I normally do. 
Yes, I see. And I will also need enough Oshaline to get back home. Juicy. Uh, see, I see. For friendly service and fuel, that's fine. There's a smile for every mile at the Oshaline sign. Oshaline. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together. <laughs>